What's up guys, I'm KB Kwan from Taste of Asian Food. This video is about how to prepare aglu e oreo. But wait, it is not the classic recipe you are familiar with. But the interpretation involves some popular Japanese ingredients, such as bonito flakes, shiitake mushroom, and scallion. And as for the flavor, the dashi, that's the Japanese stock, makes it distinctive, but the classic aglu e oreo flavor still dominates the pasta. So, here is the mushroom spaghetti aglu e oreo recipe with Japanese inspired flavor. Let's get started. Let's start by preparing the ingredients. Get 4 large cloves of garlic and slice them thinly. These are the shimeji mushrooms. These mushrooms have a slightly crunchy and slippery texture. I also use some oyster mushrooms. Tear the mushroom into smaller pieces if they are too big. Lastly, shiitake mushrooms. Cut them into slices. Add 3 tablespoons of olive oil into a pan or skillet. And use it to saute the thinly sliced garlic. There's no need to wait until the oil starts to smoke before adding the garlic. Keep the oil at low heat to control the doneness of the garlic. Saute the garlic until it turns light golden. Now remove the garlic from the skillet and use the oil to saute the mushrooms. I use three types of mushrooms because all these mushrooms have different flavor and also different textures. If you can't find these mushrooms, use any mushrooms of your choice as the substitute. I also added some thinly sliced stretch chili, not for the heat but to make the spaghetti more colorful. You can add some chili flakes if you want to make it spicy according to the level of heat that you want. After the mushrooms have turned soft, season it with salt and pepper. How about the spaghetti? It is cooked the traditional way. Bring it to a boil and add about 1.5 tablespoons of salt. Plunge 200 grams of dry spaghetti into the water. Keep stirring gently in the first minute to prevent it from sticking to the pot. You need enough water to provide sufficient room for the spaghetti to expand while cooking. The spaghetti will also tend to become mushy and sticky if there is too little water. You also need enough salt to cook the spaghetti. Remember to keep some pasta water aside to make the sauce. It is salty and starchy which helps to glue the pasta and the sauce together. The spaghetti is cooked until it just shy of al dente. The reason is we'll add the spaghetti to the garlic oil to cook briefly later. Drain the pasta and set it aside. You may want to add a teaspoon or two of olive oil to the pasta and toss it if you do not mix the pasta with the garlic sauce immediately. The oil helps to prevent the spaghetti from sticking together. Now let's look at our magical ingredient, that's the dashi powder. It usually comes in a small packet, and half of it, which is usually about a large teaspoon, should give you enough flavor for half a pound of spaghetti.
Dissolve the dashi powder in 3 to 4 tablespoons of pasta water before adding to the pasta. Keep in mind that it is salted, so be conservative when adding salt while cooking the mushrooms. Return the garlic to the skillet. And add the dashi. If you want, you can also add a teaspoon of Japanese soy sauce to accentuate the flavor, which is optional. Now transfer the drained pasta to the skillet. Mix well and be careful not to break the spaghetti. Add some pasta water if it is too dry. The starchy pasta water will help combine the pasta with the sauce. It is ready when the liquid is reduced to a thick creamy coating. Transfer the spaghetti to a serving plate. Sprinkle with some thinly sliced scallion ring and top with some bonito flakes. Now it's time to enjoy your pasta. It is incredibly delicious and surprisingly well blended with the pasta cooked the Italian way. Try it and I hope you will love it. So please subscribe, tap the notification bell and give me a thumbs up and share it on social media. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.